Hey guys, welcome back. So in this video, I'm going to explain you the concept of chaining of requests, which can be done in Postman, right? So what does it mean? It simply means that for a particular request to work, right? It needs some values either in the parameters or in the body, right? So it's not necessary that you will know all the values of your variables either in the parameters or in the body body right that value might be coming from a different request right so and it gets generated when that particular request is uh, when this request is processed right so after that request is processed then only that particular value gets generated and that value is required for another request to work right so can you see the connection between different requests so um, one request is dependent on another request and that request has to send a value to another request for that to work right so this is called the chaining of request when we are working with multiple requests right um, you need to form some way of passing the values from one request to another right so uh, in the last uh, video we looked at uh, how we created this randomly generated repository name right and we used it in this request but we can also use these values in our other requests right so in our other request also we must be having this repo name right so what we can do is we can replace the static value with our already randomly generated repo name right and we can do the same uh, for this it's not required but for this it's required right so also uh, we need to actually change the sequence of this request right because once you create the rep rep uh, repository then only you can get a specific repository right so if it this uh, post request is at the top of the chain it will be generating this repository name right in the pre-request script and once it's generated it can be passed over to all the other requests in the chain or in the collection right so that's how you can this is the one way of chaining the request right now i want to show you another example of how you can do this right so we have seen one example but i want to show you another example by take, taking up another api request right so let's go back to our github api and here i'm going to pick up a deleting a repository because till now we have been creating a repository we have been getting the repository but we haven't deleted a repository now if you want to form a work a workflow right for this particular api it's important that you do some cleanup because you'll be creating a lot of repositories when you when you're going to execute that get request a multiple times right so it's um, it's pretty important to actually delete all those repositories which are being created so that way we'll actually form a workflow here right so we will create a repository, we'll get a repository, and then finally we'll delete a repository. Right? And we'll see how um, some of the parameters which is required by deleting uh, for this particular request, delete request, will be passed on from a previous request, right? Like the post request. So we are going to look at that. First, let's form this delete rec um, API request, right? So let's add another request here. To the collection and we'll call it delete repository okay um, we'll save it to github and then here we are going to use uh, the url and then the endpoint right so this will form the entire endpoint to delete a repository now as you can see it has got two path variables owner and repo right so one um, one of the path variable we already have that value right so we can use that here 
we can directly use the environment variable repo name which is being generated in a previous request which is a post request right while we are creating a repository so it is dynamically getting generated and we can use the same value here right so we also need to change the request type here which is a delete request right and save it so uh, now uh, coming to the next path variable owner right now i can manually fill this value because i tend to know this uh, as this is my account but say for example um, somebody someone else is actually uh, working on this request api request and he doesn't know what is the owner name right so because we are using a token we are not necessarily using owner name as a variable here right so to make this request work we need to actually find a way uh, because uh, that owner value login name is present in the response of this create repository request right so we need to find a way to grab this value and make it a environment variable again so that uh, all the other requests can use this information in their very in their uh, path variables or parameters or scripts right so how we can do that now this time around we are not going to do it in pre-request script because uh, the value is present in the response and we need to grab it from there right so we'll be doing that in our tests now how we can do that so let's first create a variable okay so this i'll be calling um, json and then i'll be using a uh, json dot parse right so method which is nothing but it will convert a, a json string into an object so so that we have the complete object in a variable and then we can um, we can navigate to that particular node and get that value right so uh, here we need to pass the response body right so that will uh, that will create that and will store it in a variable called json okay okay so next uh, what we are going to do is we are going to set the environment right so environment variable so let's use this environment dot set and in this so first we are going to pass on a, a name so we'll be calling it owner right and then here we need to use the json variable which has got the uh, response body as an object and then we will be parsing through this json body right so we will first get the owner and then we'll get so we'll get the login right so that will give us the value of the login name which is present in the response body so this is going to set a variable owner here right now once this is set right what we can do is we can actually use it so we can use the same value here and what we can do is okay so now that uh, it is done right let's test this out and we'll see whether that owner name is being created in an environment variable or not right so let's execute this and to verify this actually you can go to your environment variables and here you will see a variable is created owner with the value which is grabbed from the response body right so once this is created we can actually look at the owner variable which is again the same value right so the same value is being passed here as well so we can actually replace this again with our owner variable so 
uh, all our requests are now uh, dynamic in nature, right? Because we are not using any static values here for our path variables. So it's being dynamically generated and uh, it is being set in the environment variables, which is being passed over to the later requests, right? So there is a chaining of requests here, right? Because one request is dependent on another. Okay, so both get and delete request are dependent on the post request. Without that, uh, this won't, uh, these two requests won't work, right? Because they are getting the path variables from a variable which is being set in the post request. So that that forms a chain of requests or chaining of requests, which is called in Postman, right? So, um, so let's now, what we can do is we can execute our rest of the requests, right? So we can get, we are getting the um, request here. Okay, so this is expected because response time has crossed our um, crossed our value which, which we provided, right? Uh, now let's look at this delete request, right? So. Okay, so probably we don't have uh, this permission to delete a repository, right? So what we can do is let's go to our a GitHub account, right? So let me just check that whether I have those permissions or not. So let me go to my settings, my um, developer settings, and then to my token. And so probably this is our access token. Let me give the password. And right, so this becomes, uh, if you observe your API, right? It will it will tell you that it requires it requires a particular scope in order to um, in order for this request to work, right? So on the first line, it is telling deleting a repository requires admin access. If OAuth is used, the delete repo scope is required, right? So we are using a token, and this scope is required, but if you look at our scopes, which we have defined for the token, we have not added this scope, right? So we only have the repository scope here for this token, and we need to add this delete repositories uh, scope to this token, right? For this to work. So let's update this token. And let's go back to our postman request and send it again right as you can see this time it has worked it did not give any error the status is different because if you look at your api the status should be 204 no content because this is deleting a resource from the server right so that's what we have got here so so we successfully used two path variables which are being generated in a different request, right? So that's how you chain your request together in Postman. So I hope this was useful. If you like this video, please provide a thumbs up. If you have any comments or feedback, please provide them on the video also. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, QS Script. We post videos on a regular basis. So if you don't want to miss out on any new video which is being posted regular posted um, in some time, then please subscribe to our channel and get access to lots of different videos on different automation tools. See you in the next video.